just watched some highlights from the Women's World Cup, England against Australia. Looks like it was a fairly tight game for a while. And then the second goal England score, I think it's the worst goal I've seen televised. There wasn't a farce, you know, big game, a lot of pressure. And <clears throat> there's a defensive mistake there, which is like a sin of dramatic proportions, but it's actually three mistakes, one after the next. Letting the ball bounce and then er shot in the ball twice, facing your own goal, looking to clear it, letting the forward get in to shoot into an open goal. That's so you've committed three sins and you're watching it and yeah oh for god's sake like this is a woman's world cup semi-final and you see a mistake that you would see on in a primary school match and the kid who made the mistake wouldn't play for the school team again because you prove yourself useless because you had a couple of chances to deal with it and this is a, a fem an Australian female player unable to just deal with a ball lofted over her head, uh, just a straight knock. Now, a, a, just a, a long ball, a knock, if you can't deal with that as a defender, you can't play at any level of game. It's like you could sign up for the worst amateur team in your town, and if you made a mistake like that, you wouldn't play because they don't want to stay bottom of the league forever, and you're guaranteeing they'll stay there. Because no team can afford mistakes like that. So I looked at this game and I'm like, how disappointed would you be if you were one of those Australian players who could actually play? Because that's a feature I find in the women's game. From player to player, the, the quality um, difference between them can be extreme. Like extreme differences in quality. Australian striker, that Kerr, looks a good player. Um, the the girl who played up front, who, who benefited from the bad defensive mistake, that Kemp, looks like a, a female version of Cyril Regis. She just knocks them all over the place. It's like, who doesn't like strikers like that? She's a good striker. But it's like, th those that she were playing against were like chefs in a restaurant who don't know how to cook. Like, you don't know your trade and you're playing at the highest level of the game. And when a goal goes in, we all have to celebrate like it's a World Cup semi-final. And it's like, no, that was a mistake worthy of a primary school match. So to me, it's, it's, it, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. So I don't like women's football because of that. It's not that they're not good. They've got some, there's some really good women's players. But the so the the, the 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 really good ones are miles better than the bad ones. So it's like, you know, we've got this thing in men's football. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying <clears throat> a guy who plays for Rochdale, right, in what is now the fifth level, would be a good player, a great player. But he's not a Premier League player. But he's a hundred miles better than an amateur. He's actually 100 miles better than any woman player in the world who could be playing for Rochdale at the fifth level. So it's like we can make a differentiate. We can differentiate to say, well, this guy can play, but he's a National League player. This guy can play, but he's a league player. This guy can play, he's a Premier League player. And this guy can play, he's an international. So it's like there's people in that England team if there was if there was strength in depth in women's football there's people in those international women's team were the Man United player the highest level player is in the same team as somebody who's division would be division five but because the the pool of pe of talent is so like as this brackish salty mixed whatever you can get your hands on there's a massive gulf in quality between one player and another in the same team. And so when you look at the England men's team, like Harry, uh, Harry uh, Maguire is a shit leg who shouldn't be playing international football. But bar that, everybody who gets a game is a good player. You don't, you're not going to see him like, just spew the game. Except Maguire, obviously. 
You're not going to see him spew the game. You're not going to see him do something absurd that's not worthy of anyone who plays. Uh, and mistakes that, that children make and get dropped from the school team. You don't see that. But in women's football, you do. To my mind, women's football is not ready for the big stage or the biggest stage as to make it televised and global. That's almost, it's an insult. To see mistakes like that is, it's like going to a restaurant, expecting to, to get fed properly, and then uh, someone feeds you raw vegetables and says, well, I can't cook. Were you working as a chef? Yeah, I know, and, I'm a, and, I'm a t and it's a top restaurant and I'm a top chef. But you can't cook, you don't know your trade. Oh, uh, so you, you're sexist like that, are you? Excuse me? It's how it comes across to me. It's like, how, how do you ever get another game after you make mistakes like that? And it's like, the feedback from it amongst its, its own weird non-football audience that uh, tries to boost it. And you've got all this crap where they're saying England, England men's team have never, they don't win tournaments, so women must be better than men. Says, have you seen who they're playing against? You know, there's a, a, a film because I, I actually, I do watch women's football, right? <clears throat> I do. You know the highlights. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's have a look. And every now and then you see a nice piece of skill, but mostly what you see is bad defending and stupid play. Really, really rank bad defensive play and bad goalkeeping is what you see. And it's like, that, that's, that, that's, that's not a spectacle. It's sad. It's sad. I feel, I feel bad sometimes watching the women's. I feel bad for the women who win and play well because the opponents they're up against were shit. And it's like, if they played against good players, it'd be worth more. It'd be better, wouldn't it? Which is why we've got things like the World Cup. It's why we've got things like the Champions League. We want to see the best against the best to get the best spectacle. Women's football, no. It's amateurish and, 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 and uh, corny. Cringe. It's like you don't turn on television to see professionals play and get a meal of, uh, you know, uh, sawdust. It's embarrassing. And then it's the sport's own lack of a sense of humour. And uh, it takes itself so incredibly seriously. Can't actually address or admit to its uh, amateurish mistakes and, and, and play. And it has to always say it's great. And then you, you read bullshit saying, um, since the Women's World Cup has started, there's been like a spike in, 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 in a sexist hate crime on social media and it's like no this is criticism of terrible play and it's like those of us football people it's sacrilege it's like, what are you showing us so that other night where uh wolf should have had a penalty for just a, a foul um uh, violent conduct or uh, just a, a badly timed just foul it's like it's not whether the ball was going to end up anywhere wolf should have had a penalty for a foul just physical foul. And it's like, that's a penalty. Everyone in the world saw the replay and the little VAR box scene checking for penalty. And everybody in the world saw that that was a penalty. Everybody who, who saw it. Everybody who watched it knew, knows that that were a penalty. But it wasn't. It was just dismissed. Nah, no, no penalty. So it looks bent, Right. There's nothing more damaging than, to football than that, an injustice allowed to um, carry. Football fans are weird. It's like football, right, if it's not dealt with properly, if it's not a square game, if it's not a fair game, right, can very quickly become a, an object lesson on who's really in charge. And it can become a role in injustice and a means of social control that demoralises people because they know that they can't win against the system. And it reminds them every game that that's the case. So it's like when you, when you feed me 
terrible football, a, a lower standard of football than I used to play, right? And tell me that it's world class. There's a chance I might just harumph and laugh at you. There's something, it's like, I, 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 as a football, I played a lot and enjoyed it, but limited player, but with strengths. I'm good at defending, staying on my feet, getting in the way, getting a foot in. Concentrating on what's going on, focuses on the game, making decisions, getting tackles in, staying tight, not letting people turn, winning headers. Even if it's, I know that I'm risking getting, I'm going to have to risk getting hurt here and doing it because you have to, because otherwise the next guy will risk getting hurt and take your place in the team. So you've got to be like brave. And it's specialised and you're going to get hurt and it, you get in it and uh, you, you're always going to be carrying an injury of one kind or another. And you commit yourself and you turn up every week. So when you don't get a game, it's like, hey, hang on a minute, I'm committed, I turn up every week. So you've got a reason to fight for your place. So you're in competition with other people around your own side and you're also in competition with your opponents. And you find that your opponents will give you an easier ride than your own organisation. There's always someone knocking on the door who wants your place in the team. That's football. So it, with all these different pressures, what you get in the end is a competent performance. And if you don't, well, you, you're caught, you're gone. They'll, you could be a great defender, a great defender. You make a couple of bad mistakes that are mental errors that make it look like you don't know what you're doing, right? The team you're playing for would sooner give someone a game who they have never seen than continue to play you knowing that you're a fucking, you know, a Jonah, a calamity. It's very, very difficult to rebuild your reputation after you make horrendous errors as a defender, same as it is for a goalkeeper. One time a bad goalkeeper at every level of the game, the amateur, You'd be history if you did something humiliating. History gone. You won't play again. You'd, be, you'd get cancelled. It's like, no, you're not playing for you fucking shit. We saw what you did. You're not playing for us. It's at every level of the game that there's a standard, but not in women's football. And to, to talk of it is to say, you should drop her. She's crap. Give someone else a chance. She's blown it. Um, oh, so uh, you're proving yourself sexist again, John By? Like, no, I'm, I'm about treating the game with respect and not using it as just some vehicle for, uh, uh, you know, some, some vehicle, some fad or fashion, some fetish. Which is what I think it is. Hey, but hey, you know what I mean? It's like, I have to, I'm a, as you say, I'm a guardian hate reader, aren't I? I like to know what the enemy are thinking. And they give just as much coverage to women's football as men's, and they clickbait women's football stories to look like men's football stories to uh, make it appear that people are interested in their coverage. And then you've got the new class of media professional, which is the feminist political activist turned expert in football. And they talk about kindness and compassion for people who commit footballing atrocities. We don't need the toxic masculine. It's well, well, you're always going to be shit and better players are going to be stopped from coming through because you've decided you feel sorry for certain others. That's what's known as a click. That's one of the reasons why England never win the World Cup. Sentimentality. They're killing it. Football's being killed. And if you see all those top players who've decided to completely opt out of the sport and in essence join a breakaway league, being that Saudi Arabian thing, it's like that's happened before. There was a time when uh, antics like that used to kick off with North America where suddenly top players like you, like in 1981-82, you've got Trevor Francis playing in the 
I mean, he'd be, be recently passed away. He'd be a, 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 one of England's top players playing for eight matches in a shortened US football season. It's happened before. That's a breakaway league that's happening in Saudi Arabia. All these players are like, hey, come and play here and you don't have to worry about all the shit. And they're like, okay. So, you know, strangely, footballers, right? There's a thing about footballers. If it was just striking balls and being skillful and having nice touch, right, I'd still be playing. Bloody hell, Matt Letizia would still be playing at, like, 53. You would still be playing if it was just about touch and striking a ball and passing it about. You'd still be playing. There'd be nothing to ever stop you playing, but it's not. It's about grafting and staying fit. That's the main thing it's about. Football, it's work. It's like the other side of the game. The, the, the side of the game when you haven't got the ball is just as important as when you've got it. If it, if it was all about the ball, say, people would play forever, wouldn't they? You won't have to worry about staying fit and tracking back. It's like, yeah, women's football, it's like, it's not ready. It's not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination. And pretending that it is, is insulting. <laughs>